When any phone hits my office with a name of Victory, or at least Victory in the title of the name, I gotta make sure it actually lives up to the hype. How's it going guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Victory 4G LTE. It may be a long name, but the price point is not bad, and it packs some killer specs to boot, including a 1.2 GHz dual-core processor and Android 4.0. Is this the best you can get for your money on Sprint for 100 bucks? We'll find out in the review, but first, some love to Best Buy Mobile as our partners for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we give to you on the site at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile to get this device or any other device on the major four carriers, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your settings, 4G LTE settings, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're maximizing your device at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look. Victory 4G LTE, is this the must-have device on Sprint for 100 bucks? We'll find out in the full video review. So you know what, you got 100 bucks. You don't have 200 though, and you don't want that Galaxy S3 and the Evo 4G LTE on Sprint because, well, they're both $199.99 on contract. This could be a device for you. This is the Samsung Galaxy Victory 4G LTE, and the name made me a mouthful. It's actually so much, blah, so much of a mouthful that at first I get tongue-tied, and second I have to take a breath which is very rare in my videos. If you know, apparently I speak for 11 minutes without taking breaths if you read the comments. But Samsung Galaxy Victory 4G LTE available now at Sprint for $99.99 and it's packing a pretty decent feature set, although it does lack in some ways in comparison to the Samsung Galaxy Stellar, which is probably the closest sibling when it comes to the Samsung family on another carrier. Spec wise, 1.2 gigahertz, dual core Snapdragon Lite processor, so Snapdragon S4 Lite. We'll do some quadrant standard testing in part two to see how that compares to the Galaxy Stellar and then the 1.5 gigahertz S4 CPU and some of the higher end devices on the market right now. It's packing a four inch LCD display, so same look and feel there as the Samsung Galaxy Stellar, which I reviewed last week. Then you've got a five megapixel camera on the back with 720p HD video recording. You've got Android 4.0 out of the gate, so it's so nice to finally see them putting Android 4.0, and not just Samsung, but in general, LG, Motorola, all of the OEMs, putting Android 4.0 on all of their devices, including what I would consider, I guess, now to be a mid-range device, even though it's packing some pretty decent specs. TouchWiz user interface installed on this as well. 2,100 milliamp hour battery, 4G LTE connectivity if you're in a Sprint market that supports it. And then you've got these funky little buttons down here. They look like physical buttons. They're actually capacitive buttons. And out of anything on the design of this device, this is probably the most annoying thing for me, is these look like physical buttons, so you automatically go and expect to kind of push down on them, but they're not. They're capacitive buttons but they're ingrained in a way that makes it look, or integrated rather, in a way that makes it look like they're physical buttons. Otherwise, it's a pretty decent device, if not a little bit chunky. That's probably the one downside if I had to pick you know, something about this device. It's a chunky device. You look at this at 100 bucks, and then you look at the Droid Razor M, which is 100 bucks on Verizon, and you're like, that one's much thinner, edge-to-edge -edge display, better specs. You're like, this is a little bit pricey for 100 bucks, or a little, you know, in terms of specs, I would say maybe for 80, this would be a good comparison, but a little bit up there on the pricey side, given what you can get on other carriers. That said, that's the historical problem uh, in Q4, all these different price points. Let's take a look at what comes out of the gate. First of all, you get five home screens out of the box, as you can see here. Of course, you can pinch to zoom, and you can add two additional ones for a total of seven right there on your Victory 4G LTE. App-wise, not a whole lot out of the gate when it comes to Sprint stuff. You get a couple of applications, namely Sprint Hotspot, Sprint ID, and Sprint Zone. Then you get all the Google integration, of course, and then you get like G+, Plus, G+, G+, Plus Messenger, all that jazz. And then you get Visual Voicemail, VPN Client, and Google Wallet installed on this device also. Look and feel, you know, for the most part, looks a lot like a typical TouchWiz device. You'll notice that they kind of took the Jelly Bean approach. If you remember my Galaxy Note 2 video review, you'll remember that there's a brightness indicator right there on the Jelly Bean version uh, of TouchWiz. You're seeing that here even though this is just running Ice Cream Sandwich. This is not running, I repeat, not running Jelly Bean. And then up here you've got some shortcuts, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sync and screen rotation that they don't scroll over like they do on the Note 2 and on the Galaxy S3. Settings can be easily accessed here. And again, 4G LTE if you're in a market that supports it. Charlotte is getting it by the end of the year, uh, but it is not there just yet. Right now you're just on 3G. Wireless and network stuff, device stuff in the settings. You've got personal, you've got system, and then more. So down here, out of the gate, like I said, the Sprint applications. And then you have your widgets over here, and this is an implementation I really like. When you look at this versus Motorola's user interface versus HTC's interface, I like the fact that the widgets are combined in with the apps. It preserves kind of that ice cream sandwich slash jelly bean look and feel, but 
The one thing I don't like about stock and with Motorola as well is when you scroll over from apps, it automatically scrolls over into widgets. Whereas over on this, it keeps you in your app drawer, if you will. So for example, I did not mean to do that. I can scroll through here and take a look and just go back and forth through my apps, my three pages of applications, but I'm never scrolling into widgets or downloaded applications. So you can see widgets. Once I'm over here, again, can scroll through my widget screens back and forth like that. And of course I can see my downloaded if I had uh, any applications in there. There we go, perfect, downloaded applications. And then I can go back to my widgets, but it never crosses over between apps and widgets. So I think from an organizational perspective, that's pretty nice. Speaking of, I have some new Google Plus notifications on my Heron Baker account. Let's take a look at messaging here out of the gate. I wanna bring it up so I can see I'm pulling up messaging. And then you've got the typical Samsung TouchWiz keyboard here. You've got Samsung's keypad, you have Google Voice typing out of the gate, and of course you can download additional keyboards from Google Play. There are two that I like in particular. There's an ice cream sandwich keyboard and there's a jelly bean keyboard. Both are fantastic. I probably would give a slight edge to the jelly bean keyboard just because it's a little bit faster and it's a little bit more up to date. But that one's free and then there's a free version of the ice cream sandwich keyboard as well. Now in terms of screen size, it's gonna depend on what you're coming from. If you're coming from an iPhone 3GS or an iPhone 4 with a 3.5 inch display, or maybe you're coming from something older like the Hero, or something of that nature, 3.2 to 3.7 inch display area, this is probably gonna be a nice upgrade for you. At four inches, it's pretty nice. It's a sweet spot for a lot of people. I would argue that the sweet spot now with the bigger devices is kind of moved up to 4.3 inch displays. But for some people, four, will be more than enough and be relatively pocketable. Overall, speed is decent. Portrait to landscape transitions are nice and fast. That said, if you're coming from something like the Vivid or, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of some other ones, the Vivid, the Evo 4G, uh, perhaps you're coming from something with a 4.5 or 4.7 inch display, it might be a little bit hard to type on this in the beginning. That said, Samsung's keypad, not my favorite in the world, but we'll just do a quick test here. Quick brown fox. Jumped over the lazy dog. Quick Brown Fox jumped over the lazy dog again. Portrait to landscape transitions, nice and fast there, little to no lag, and then you can jump from there into other applications. And you've got your typical stuff here, attach, send, and of course add a recipient. So it's a little bit different though from other interfaces within, and I was told that actually with the update that I installed between the unboxing and the review that this would fix it, but it didn't even with the update installed. Supposedly the attachment moves over in a later version of Android or a small update to Android over underneath the send button, which is how it is on the Galaxy S3 and on some of the more recent. Uh, other recent Samsung devices with TouchWiz. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. I, I don't like the fact that these kind of take up and there's a lot of just endless kind of dead area over here that you can't use. I'd like to see the text boxes be a little bit larger. Otherwise, uh, other things pretty similar if you're used to the TouchWiz look and feel here. Let's go into the browser and forgive Sprint's 3G speeds. Although, I will say they've gotten better in the Charlotte area in the past couple of weeks since I came back uh, from Berlin and got rid of uh, the DNC stuff, kind of moved out of town. And, uh, they've been pretty impressive. I think Network Vision has at least rolled out on the cell site that uh, that is configured near my office. But Portrait to Landscape transitions fast as usual. Pinch to zoom fast as well, as you can see here. No lag whatsoever. So again, you know, I'm not really seeing a difference either between the 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Lite CPU over here and then the 1.2 gigahertz S4, according to the specs, non-light CPU on the Galaxy Stellar. I'm seeing pretty similar performance and overall speed on both of these devices, and the interface is very similar as well. You've got your windows up here where you can go and get tabs, can access a new tab, for example, and then scroll back and forth through here and access those, and of course, I like the fact that the animations kind of keep up with me, and there's a little to no lag, which is nice because even in a mid-range device like this, or what I'm calling the mid-range device area now, these devices can keep up with the basic tasks, which is nice, as opposed to where they were, you know, even a year ago or six months ago, where an Android device that was 100 bucks or 50 bucks really struggled and had a lot of lag. So it's nice to see that improvement. And of course, contacts here, very similar to what you've seen on recent versions of TouchWiz. I've got a picture here for Bill Stevenson, and oddly enough, he looks a lot like me. And we've got phone here with the mobile, the connection, groups, ringtones, and of course, shortcuts to message, shortcuts to call, and then to edit down through here, and I can cancel out uh, from there. But you can see the overall look and feel is pretty similar here. Keypad, logs, favorites, and contacts as well in both uh, the, the contacts application. You've got some stuff over here with phones, groups, favorites, and you can access your contacts. What I meant to say is you can access your contacts uh, directly from the phone application. And then over here you have some tabs as well uh, and contacts where you can go back and access the phone application. So integration amongst uh, multiple applications within the device. But again, the fluidity, very impressed on this device. Stay tuned for part two because we're gonna cover speed tests, network tests, 
and overall device test to see is this device really worth your hundred bucks. Stay tuned for more.